welcome to our hearing this afternoon. Um, we are officially calling this to order. This is the public hearing of the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation, and Futures Thinking, joint with the committees on public services, local government, health, and demography, mm -hmm. and finance. This now called to order. Today, we'll discuss the following bills on water sustainability in connection with the ongoing water crisis experience in different parts of the country. So we have my bill, which is Senate Bill Number 16, Water Sustainability Act. We have Senate Bill Number 310, an act to promote rural health by providing an accelerated program for the construction of a potable water supply system in every barangay in the country within three years. This is authored by Senator, the Senate President, um, Miguel Subiri. And then third is the Senate Bill Number 1048 on Safe Drinking, Water Act, which is um, authored by our Majority Floor Leader, Senator Joel Villanueva. Also included in this agenda is the privileged speech that this representation delivered on World Water Day on March 22. Um, I'd like to recognize the presence of Senator Tulfo, um, and I'll give you the floor, sir, after I Thank you. my opening statement. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so just, just some... Um, data that we have and uh, our, our objective is to get a meaningful and um, uh, interactive discussion with our resource persons who are the experts. I always come to a hearing uh, with the assumption that I am not the expert. So I want to be educated. I will not argue with you. I will have hopefully um, good discussions with all of you. Uh, administrative note, wag nyo na akong basahan ng mahahabang speech because we can read the uh, mahahabang position paper because we can read that during our downtime. I want to make the most out of the time you came here, uh, which is less than two hours for us because we have a session in at three o'clock. So um, the, the details we have is that according to the National Water Resource Board, an estimated number of Filipinos, 11 million lack access to clean water in the country. So 11 million lack access to clean water. And therefore, these families uh, are left to rely on water sources such as deep well, springs, rivers, lakes, and rainwater, which are not necessarily um, potable and in many cases are not reliable. So we have 11 million who can wake up in a day and, and not have water to drink that day or to, to use for whatever other reasons they need to use their water. Um, and so the lack of these facility, facilities has also forced many to defecate in the open, rising water contamination and the spread of diseases. Uh, um, you will notice that um, in this hearing, and I will call you as uh, your, your time to speak comes up, um, unlike most hearings uh, where they only focus on the agency involved, this being the Committee of the Sustainable Development Goals and Futures Thinking, we try to bring in all the agencies involved. And you are very welcome to recommend other experts in the field or even non-experts who should be listening to, this, to these discussions because uh, we cannot find the solution unless all the various agencies that in some way are involved in the availability of clean water supply are present. And that is why DSD WD is here because it is your job to look after the welfare of the people. So these 11 million people, hindi mo naman sila mapapainom kung abutan niya lang natin ng AX, di ba? So that's why you're here, no? And DOH is also here because um, I'm not aware what is the depth of your involvement in the discussion on the sustainability and the uh, infrastructure and the investments that are needed for water, but you must be part of the discussion. So that's that's why, and of course, DOST is another um, agency whose uh, role is very important because um, one of the uh, um, one of the possible uh, wars in the future is the availability of water. So, if you ask me, if we should be training students for ROTC or training them to learn how to innovate so that they can find and ensure that the Filipinos have clean water, I would rather do the latter. But that is my personal opinion. So, on that note. Um, just to add a few more details, um, according to the numbers given by Manila Water Company, almost 1.7 cubic meter per second of water is being lost. So we always talk about supply, but we rarely talk about that loss. So I want that to be part of the equation. The leaks were said to be due to antiquated pipes, which Manila Waters and Mainilad and the Metropolitan Water Works and Sewerage System, MWSS, have already started repair works on. So I'd like updates on this as well. Um, 
All of this comes alongside Pagasa's announcement of El Nido, which the country will be experiencing in the next three months until next year. The heat index will remain at 40 degrees Celsius in the next few weeks. The water level in one in our five major dams, namely Angat, Ipo, La Mesa, San Roque, and Caliraya, continue to decrease. Uh, and finally, in my privileged speech, uh, I mentioned how water shortages direct uh, affect women and girls disproportionately because customarily it's uh, women and girls ang nagiigib. Not to say na hindi nagiigib ang lalaki or ang, uh, ang uh, tatay, pero traditionally, yun yung kasama sa roles ng babae nagiigib. So in that sense, we want to be conscious of that. So um, again, this being an SDG hearing, we take note of uh, SDG 3, good health and well-being, SDG 5, gender equality, SDG 6, clean water and sanitation, SDG 10, reduce inequalities, and of course, sustainable cities also, because what we really want is that every city and community have their, their own um, reliable water supply. So I look forward to an insightful and fruitful discussion um, I will be very conscious of the time. Um, again, like I said, we have session at 3 o'clock. So in order to um, uh, give due respect to the time that each one of you have, have devoted for our hearing, it is my goal to finish this hearing at the proper time so that each and every one of you can speak. Um, we have other resource persons that we purposely move to the second hearing so that hindi kayo nagaantayan. We are very mindful of your time and we thank you for the time that you're here. So I will give the floor to um, Senator Tulfo, but um, Secretariat, may I ask that for every Senator that may join us, ma remind lang sila of our time constraints no? because I need to stick to the agenda and we cannot be distracted given na uh, uh, we only we have less than two hours. So, um, Senator Tulfo, if you would like to say a few words before we, we call on the resource persons. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Madam Chair. Good morning. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Senator Pia Caetano. And good afternoon to all our guests. Before anything else, I commend this committee for taking up this concern that is undeniably felt by millions of our people because water is life and clean water means health. In 2004, we enacted Republic Act 9275, or the Philippine Clean Water Act of 2004. It was a declared policy that we formulate a holistic national program of water quality management that recognizes that water quality management issues cannot be separated from concerns about water sources and ecological protection, public health, and quality of life. Almost 20 years later, we are still here. 11 million Filipinos still do not have access to clean water. And according to a recent Philippine Statistic Authority report, a total of 53,066 Filipinos died between 2010 and 2019 due to waterborne diseases such as typhoid and paratyphoid fever, bloody diarrhea, cholera, viral hepatitis, and leptospirosis. This is a major health concern, a critical public concern. Sa aking programa po, madami na po ang lumapit sa akin tungkol sa problema nila sa tubig, mga water interruption dito sa Kamaynilaan, lalo na ngayong kasagsagan ng taginit. Pasakit po talaga ito sa kanila. At kung problema din sa Maynila ang tubig, mas lalong problema ito sa ating mga probinsya. Ama kailan lang, may nilapit sa akin na reklamo. Hindi lang chocolate hills ang chocolate sa Bohol, pati tubig kulay chocolate. Sa isang barangay sa Bohol kung saan nagkakasakit ng mga tao, ako po mismo ang nagpatest ng tubig upang malaman kung anong problema. At napag-alaman na ang tubig ay positibo ng E. coli. Napag-alaman ko na ang water provider nila ay LGU. Local Water Works System. Matagal na po ito na problema, pero hindi nakakaalma mga tao dahil isang pamilya ang humahawak noon pa. Takot daw sila sa pamilya mahawak nito. This is the reason, uh, Madam Chair, and you said, bakit nandito po mga taga-DOH? For me, it's very important that they're here. DOH, because sa problema po dun sa Bohol, uh, walang gustong umaksyon tungkol sa maruming tubig 
and the only hope that those people are relying to are you mga taga national government because the national because the LGUs does not cooperate mismo sila nagsabi na contaminated na ng E. coli yung tubig doon pero they're not doing anything that's the reason kailangan na kailangan dito ang DOH as well as the DNR sa Bacolod naman madami din po ang nagreklamo ng inaasahan nilang pag-aayos ng water supply nila dahil sa privatization ay walang pinatunguhan Berkey and iced tea colored water is a daily agonizing experience by water consumers in Bacolod City and worse in some instances no water at all. Poor water services na nga ay increase water cost pa. Ibig sabihin, wala na nga tubig sa gripo, e ang mahal-mahal pa ng singil. Paano? While there was no water rate hike, their water bill increased because households would normally have to leave the faucet running for hours just to get rid of the turbidity and see some clean water. Three years since the privatization, the district continued to show poor water services in the city. Ang goal to privatize ito mga water utility services natin ay mapagandang serbisyo sa mga tao. Pero bakit nagkakaganito? Inalaman po ito sa mga kwento ng ating mga kawawang mga kababayan. Ano ang ginagawa ng Local Water Utilities Administration? LWUA LUA was created in 1973 to revolutionize water supply provisions in the countryside. Pero, ang nagre-revolusyon ngayon ay mga tiyan ng ating makababayan dahil sa pagkonsumo ng maduduming tubig. Ang problema po kasi ay ang traditional water sources tulad ng wells and springs ay kadalasan kontaminado ng harmful bacteria, parasites, at iba pang pollutants na nagdudulot ng serious health risk sa mga residente. We have to reduce the reliance on groundwater, deep wells, as well as managed surface water supply. We have to explore other options for our people. We have to make use of technology that's readily available. It's a solar-powered system. This system has lower operating costs and minimal environmental impact compared to traditional diesel-powered pumps. Pwede din natin explore ang rainwater treatment facilities. Nagpile po ako ng bill tungkol dito. And that is why I'm in full support of the bills we are taking up today in the hopes that we can find better options for our people. Madam Chair, I hope with your guidance we could solve these problems of our people. And while it will take time to fully resolve this problem, the best thing we can do is to start the ball rolling now, laying out concrete plans and ensuring its execution. Salamat po, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Tulfo. Um, if His Honor would like, and uh, of course with the, going through the proper channels, uh, the appropriate committee um, where his bill was filed, uh, this representation would be happy to include the rainwater bill um, in this hearing, if it has not been taken up by any okay. other committee. As we take cognizance of the fact that there is a bit of an overlap, no, because when it comes to the creation of... Uh, uh, Department of Water. I think there's another committee handling that, and I I don't know off the top of my head where His Honor's bill is filed. But uh, this representation is offering to include it if it would please His Honor. And again, like I said, go through the proper channels later on. Thank you. Um, the concerns raised by the gentleman are concerns also shared by uh, the chairperson. Um, in fact, I I kept my speech short, but I'd like to commend his honor for including um, the rate of uh, illness that uh, mostly infants and young children uh, go um, suffer precisely because of water that is not clean. It is the main reason for us continuing to have a high infant and child mortality rate. Um, children who are born, who are who die of waterborne diseases. So, on that note, um, my last um, before we start, uh, I have the opening statement of our majority floor leader, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, and I will. Um, I will um, insert this into the record, but let me just some highlight some points. Um, uh, like I mentioned earlier, His Honor, Senator Joel Villanueva is the author of Senate Bill Number 1048 or the Safe Drinking Water Act. 
and uh, he takes note that um, Pag-asa recorded the highest heat index at 42 uh, degrees centigrade recorded in Agusan del Norte, Northern Sambar, Pampanga, Sambales, and Ilocos Norte, and even in Pasay. Meanwhile, 43 uh, degrees centigrade was recorded in Pangasinan, Albay, and Davao del Sur. Um, unfortunately, despite our country being surrounded with water, majority of Filipinos still have no access to safe drinking water, a basic human need, especially um, in this hot and humid weather. So this is uh, the statement of the majority floor leader, and I will insert the entire it in its entirety into the record. So on that note... Um, let me tell you our flow so that we can, as I said, at least have all of our resource persons here today speak. First, we will start with NEDA. Then we will go to DNR. After DNR, Department of Health, then DOST, then Department of Social Welfare, MWSS, and National Water Resource Board. Tama, I didn't forget anyone. So those are the speakers for today. And I will manage this time so that um, uh, we can um, finish everyone. Uh, as the chairperson and only having one uh, other senator here, of course, we can ask clarificatory questions. But um, I always ask my colleagues that if it will be lengthy, then we'll have to push it to the end again, just to be able to follow our agenda and let all our resource persons speak. So let's start now with Neda, Mr. Francis Brian Cobalies. Um, who is the Assistant Director for NEDA Infrastructure. Um, you are supposed to discuss the Philippine Water Supply and Sanitation Master Plan, correct? Okay. And then be ready, DNR. Thank you, Madam uh, Chair, and good afternoon, po, uh, Senator Rafi, and our colleagues uh, present here today. So I will be discussing um, very briefly about the Philippine Water Supply and Sanitation Master Plan. <clears throat> Next slide, please. This is the outline of uh, my presentation. Next slide, please. So just uh, a bit of a background there. Uh, this is the current state of the water supply and sanitation sector. Um, it, the, the chair already mentioned a while ago about the state of our water supply and uh, sanitation. Uh, as we can see, we, we still haven't um, reached uh, universal access. So, marami pa po mga kababayan natin na nabanggit po rin ni Senator Tulfo ang walang access sa uh, safe water and sanitation. And marami rin po sa ngayon ay ang nag uh, defecate pa rin po uh, in the open. Next slide, please. So, just to show po yung institutional fragmentation po na um, hinaharap po ng ating sector. Uh, as we can see here, there are a lot of uh, agencies across the bureaucracy with functions related to water. So oftentimes this uh, result in, uh, in inefficient and um, um, a mismanaged uh, water resources. So wala rin po tayong single repository of data and uh, oftentimes yung programs and projects po natin in the sector are uncoordinated. Next slide, please. So um, we formulated this plan um, in coordination with all the water-related agencies in the government to have uh, a single direction uh, for achieving our targets in the water sector dahil wala pa nga pong um, Department of Water to, to oversee all these projects and uh, programs. Next slide, please. So um, previously we had a separate roadmap for uh, water supply and sanitation. So what we did here was to consolidate uh, the two. Um, and this will uh, serve as a guide in, in achieving our targets in uh, the water sector, uh, specifically in universal access to water supply and sanitation. Next slide. So the main uh, agenda of the master plan are, are these eight uh, key reform agenda. So we have here establishing effective uh, sector institutions. Kasama po dito yung pag-address po natin ng fragmented uh, institutions natin. So ito po uh, talagang in-advocate po dito sa KRA1 na to yung uh, ating pagbuo po ng Department of Water. And then you have strengthening the regulatory environment. Kasama po dito yung pagbuo rin ng independent regulatory body for um, water supply and sanitation. And we have here effective uh, ensuring effective services 
uh, balancing water supply and demand, building climate resiliency, uh, enabling access to funding and financing, isa pong malaking problema sa sector. And of course, yung supporting uh, ano natin, mechanisms like yung sapat na data and of course, research and development. Next slide, please. So, uh, nabanggit po rin ni uh, Madam Chair kanina yung pagbupo ng DWR. Ito po talaga yung um, what uh, Key Reform Agenda 1 aims to 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 achieve po. No? Um, sa ngayon po kasi wala po tayong overall apex body to really coordinate uh, the entire sector uh, in an efficient manner. So this is one of the priority legislation po ng, ng executive branch nasa, nasa PDP po natin 2023 to 2028. Nasa SONA rin po ng ating presidente. And we noticed that there are already nine bills in the Senate po and numerous bills in Congress po that aim to do this, uh, to establish this body. Next slide po. So uh, this is just indicative uh, requirements po no, nung, uh, nung master plan natin. This is just a notional amount that was estimated using unit cost po. No? Uh, this is the estimated amount to achieve yung ating universal access to to water supply and sanitation. So isang trillion po over the next uh, 10 years. Next slide po. So just to share with you an, 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 uh, a development po uh, uh, in the sector, no? Uh, Total, nandito naman po yung DNR. Next slide, please. Uh, recently, the president uh, approved the creation of a WRMO, uh, which will be responsible for the integration and harmonization of all government efforts and regulatory activities. Kasama rin po sa mandate po ng itong uh, WRMO is to push for the creation of the apex body, which is yung Department of Water and uh, yung ating regulatory commission po. So, uh, I've been signaled po na time's up. So, uh, yun lang po. Thank you. Yes, yes po, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Tasca. Yes, Thank you. Para lang kung may utang pa kami sa'yo eh. Okay ka na naman. Tapos sakto na naman. Sakto, sakto lang. O, yun. Perfect. Congrats. Um, may questions ako pero I'll hold it, no? In the interest of getting a bigger picture, no? Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, who did I say was next? DNR. And Yusek, Yusek uh, Rodriguez, you will yes. speak on behalf of DNR. Okay. Yes, and then Madam after Chair. that, please be ready, DOH, and then to be followed by DOST. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, uh, Honorable Pia Caetano, the Honorable Senator Rafi Tulfo, and to our partners from other agencies. I'm Ignatius Rodriguez, DNR USEC for Special Concerns and Legislative Affairs. I'm with uh, Dr. C.P. David, who is the uh, USEC for Integ Integrated Science, who is the department's technical expert on water resource management. Also joining the DNR team is Dr. Bill David, the director of the National Water Resources Board. The DNR fully supports Senate Bill 16, 310, uh, 1048, relating to ensuring the safe and clean drinking water and, uh, and uh, for Filipinos. Um, just to share relevant information, which was partly mentioned by uh, the, our friends from the OH, um, on April 27, 2023, Executive Order Number 22 was issued creating the Water Resources Management Office, or WRMO in the Department of the uh, uh, Department of Environment and Natural Resources. The WRMO, in coordination with all the stakeholders, shall primarily be responsible for the integration and harmonization of all government efforts and regulatory activities for the availability and sustainable management of water resources in the whole country. Um, the department lauds. Uh, the proponents and supports the passage of the bills and does not interpose any objection to the passage and looks forward to its role um, as the said bills further empower all water-related agencies to perform their mandate of providing all Filipinos with safe, clean, and affordable drinking water. Should you require, Madam Chair, uh, USEC CP David can explain the general plans and priorities of the WRMO. We are also ready to submit to the Secretariat our detailed position paper in the interest of time. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, very briefly lang, Dr. David, no? you're a doctor of what? 
I have a PhD in environmental science and geology. Ah, okay, wonderful. It's nice naman to know. So we have experts here. So just very briefly, you know, this again, yes. this is an overview. I, get, I want everyone to be able to speak. But what will the WRMO um, be prioritizing? And is it a stopgap measure while we anticipate mm -hmm. a department of water to, to be established? Is that correct? Okay. Thank you. So then what would the priorities be? Sure. The WRMO as created by um, EO22 last April 27, you can think of it as, I, I don't see it as a stopgap measure, but definitely it works on a very short term. No, it, it doesn't look at medium or even long term at this point in time, because as you mentioned, the water crisis is already happening, and therefore some of the solutions need to happen, not next year or 2024, 25, but this year. And again, I do have a rule. I try to let you finish, but okay. I just want to park this so you can answer it also mm -hmm. later on. So since you've already responded to my main concern, which is yung sakop niya, and you said Apa. it's it's meant to be immediate concerns. Correct. Then I'll need you to answer or somebody in DNR to respond to. So who's handling the long term? Okay. Okay. Currently, the WRMO consolidates some of the water agencies that our friend from Ned uh, mentioned that uh, it's uh, not not connected. No. Uh, aside from the six agencies that are already lodged in DNR that has water-related functions, for example, watershed management, water quality uh, management under EMB, we now include within the WRMO our friends from LUA, the Network of Water Districts, NWRB, of course, and uh, LLDA. The, the priority... Um, efforts of the WRMO would be to resolve some of the internal issues between these government agencies. Now, truth be told, even if we belong to the same government, there are uh, conflicts now between these agencies. And now that we belong to one umbrella, hopefully we will be able to resolve that. So that's priority number one. Second priority would be existing water projects of government. Not many people know that this year marks the year w where uh, the largest funding for water supply uh, happened. No? A total of 14.6 billion pesos uh, is earmarked no, for water supply projects just for this year. And just to, to show you how the, the magnitude of this uh, funding for this year, uh, the amount is more than the total amount of water supply projects from the last 10 years. No, Salin Too Big, uh, W3P, and so on and so forth. And so it's a huge task. It's lodged currently under the DPWH and the DILG, but since the creation of the WRMO, uh, both uh, departments have uh, sought the help of DNR to manage these uh, 1,374 barangay water projects. The third... Yes, that whole amount, and how much was it again? 14.6. 14? 14.6 billion. 14.6 billion. Mm -hmm. That is specifically for... Water supply. Barangay. Mostly barangay, some municipal projects. So you said 1,374... 1,374 projects all in all across uh, the San Visayas and Mindanao. And, and can, can you just elaborate on that? Like, what, what exactly is it? What, what kind Most of, of the projects, uh, Madam Chair, would be in uh, the provision of water through uh, deep wells uh, using solar-powered pumps. Um, and uh, the supply would be uh, for anywhere from 1,000 people to about uh, 5,000 people, no, barangay level. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then finally, uh, the, the third prong in WRMO's plans, no, short-term plans, would be to engage all stakeholders, meaning the academe, our researchers, um, NGOs, and even the private sector no, to help in the provision of water to our communities. That's all, Madam Chair. So, okay. So, to be clear, does the sustainability issue fall on priority number three or that's still not covered? 
It, uh, sustainability is actually covered in all three, even in number two, where in, you know, we try to implement government projects. The problem we had in the past was when we provide infrastructure and then the infrastructure actually breaks down after okay. a few okay. months. No, because that sense, there's a sustainability component it, now yes. to address that short the sustainability issue. intervention. Correct. Okay. And the sustainability issue, sustainability issue there is that we provided funds for CAPEX, but there's no funding for OPEC maintenance. Okay. for maintenance. Okay. And uh, if you will ask me, Madam Chair, I believe that water as provided to our communities um, it cannot be completely free because anything that is free is not valued. And therefore, based on their capacity to pay, they would have to pay for the water that is provided to them uh, through these projects. And for that uh, funding that we will actually ga gather, that will be the seed fund for the operational expense of these infrastructure. No, so that's the general plan. Sige. I still need to discuss more on sustainability, but I'll let you go now again in the interest of time. No? Okay, thank you. So we're good, DNR. I'll move on. Okay, so let me call on uh, DOH, Dr. Vianzon on, yeah, there you are, Division Chief of Health Promotions Bureau, and then please be ready, DOSD. Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Senator Tulfo and everybody. Uh, on behalf of the Department of Health, we recognize that the three bills presented here, which are SBN 310, SBN 16, and that first one, SBN 1048, all have the same goal as far as the Department of Health is concerned, and that is to promote and ensure safety and quality of drinking water. It may be addressed uh, differently objectively based on the content, but at the end of the day, the common goal is really to have uh, safety and quality of water for all the uh, communities it will be serving. For specifically for SBN 1048, which is the amendment of Code of Sanitation, just to update the body, we are now looking into updating it uh, for this year, hopefully to attune it to the current times because the the last uh, revision, or not last revision, but the last version was in 1976. So medyo matagal na po talaga, uh, Senator. So it's high time that we really amend this. For SBN number 310, we definitely support this, but uh, on, the prob on the premise that it should be following the Philippine National Standards for Drinking Water. I think this is where the Department of Health can play a big role because it's the one that sets the standards of what quality water is, of what uh, safety water is and should be potable for everybody. And for the last Senate bill, which is uh, on the framework and which is um, proposed by the Madam Secretary, by the Madam Senator, definitely the Department of Health also supports this. And we believe that a single agency to regulate water and sanitation service delivery should be created. It also considers a comprehensive water data quality that looks into a comprehensive information system to determine the water and sanitation coverage, including water quality source data. On the aspect of the FATS or the Philippine approach to total sanitation, uh, this is big, basically a guide for the local government units to see that the, that the community and its sanitation status are on the graded aspect, meaning to say that eventually all communities or all households in the locality will now be um, abandoning the wrong practice of open defecation, given the reality that open defecation still plays a big role in the contamination of our water sources. So hopefully, in the long run, all municipalities, all provinces should be uh, free or zero open defecation because they have already abandoned that poor practice of um, of uh, excreting anywhere in the bush. Then the Philippine approach to total sanitation, um, Your Honor, is that looks into a grading period, a grade zero, grade one, grade two, and grade, grade three. I will not elaborate on the specific grades, but most importantly is the fact that when we want to go into zero authentication, all households should have their own sanitary facilities or at least access to sanitary toilet facilities. And uh, sharing may be allowed, but eventually sharing will not be continued because uh, what is important is that every community or every household has its own access to its own uh, sanitation, basic sanitation facility. So that's for it, uh, Your Honor, for the Department of Health. Thank you, Paul.
Thank you. Later on, balikan namin kayo kasi I think yung concerns na nakarating kay Senator Tulfo uh, is directly related to the lack of those facilities. And when we uh, want our people to know kung sino yung malalapitan nila, I think it also has to be clear kung saan yung sa inyo, sa DOH, on policy, at saan din yung LGU dahil uh, ang implementation is really with them so that magkaroon din tayo ng um, clarity or if there are confusions as um <clears throat> as uh, we recognize um is a fact sinabi na sa atin ngayon sa hearing na uh, even the agencies are not working together as harmoniously as possible then we want to be able to address that no so balikan namin kayo diyan in the interest of uh, getting some answers to this very um troubling troubling uh, issue. So I'll go now to uh, DOST. Um, Yusek Maborang, you'll be the one to speak on behalf of uh, DOST. Thank you, Madam Chair. Magandang uh, hapon po sa ating lahat. I'd like to uh, highlight uh, three major trusts of uh, the Department of Science and uh, Technology relating to uh, water in uh, general. Next slide, please. The DOST has various completed and ongoing initiatives in uh, response to the government's call for action towards achieving water security. And with the direction and guidance of our Secretary, Dr. Renato Yusulidum Jr., the DOST is further intensifying efforts to maximize the use of science, technology, and innovation to achieve the said goal recognizing the critical role of uh, water for wealth creation, wealth protection, promotion of human well-being, and sustainability of environment and communities. We already have a number of, of technologies and uh, knowledge and practices or protocols developed to address gaps and support bigger initiatives in uh, various aspects of water, resource management, distribution, and applications, among others. For DOST developed and funded uh, or supported initiatives alone, a number of useful technologies and innovations are made available for wide deployment, and details are provided in, uh, in the compendium of water-related technologies and in the DOST Tech Hub, an online repository of technologies which can be accessed by the public. The Department's Community Empowerment through Science and Technology, or the CES program, and the recently launched Smart and Sustainable Communities program are among the best or the platforms being utilized to facilitate the deployment of these technologies to the communities, including the geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas or GIDA. To support uh, various water-related research and development initiatives, quality, monitor quality monitoring and even enforcement of related policies, the DOST is providing water-related calibration and testing services through its regional standards and testing laboratory laboratories, which are managed with the DOST regional offices through the regular and specialized testing labs of DOST research and development institutes and partner laboratories, both from the government and private uh, sector locally and abroad through the OneLab network. Today, OneLab is composed of 56 ISO 17025 accredited member laboratories, which include DOST and non-DOST laboratories, government and private laboratories from local and abroad, which are interconnected through an online platform to facilitate seamless referral of samples within the network. The provincial SNT offices of DOST are also equipped to receive and facilitate referral of samples to, suit, to suitable testing laboratory within the OneLab uh, network. Now, to coordinate various water-related R&D initiatives of the department and to promote and increase the participation of stakeholders on the programs and to build on the local capabilities and expertise, the department initiated the establishment of the following 
water-related niche centers in the regions for R&D or NICERs. First, we have the Smart Water Infrastructure Management R&D Center, or the SWIM, implemented by Isabella State University, Kagen State University, and Carino State University. The other is on uh, Coastal Engineering and Management R&D Center, or COSTER, implemented by the Mariano Marcos State University main campus. Another would be on mountain engineering centered towards sustainable infrastructure and upland water security program or the Bundok, implemented by University of Cordillera and St. Louis University, together with Kalinga State University, the DNR and the Watershed and Water Resources Research Development and Extension Center. Another would be on Center for Lake Sustainable Development or CLSD, implemented by Laguna State Polytechnic University and UP Diliman. The last is on R&D Center for Environmental Technologies and Compliance, implemented by Polytechnic University of the Philippines, University of Diliman, and Adamson University. With the support of the government, policymakers, partner agencies, and stakeholders, these NICERs are envisioned to grow and mature into national research centers or institutions to lead in the continuous development of technologies and other innovations, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so yeah, again, I have questions, but I'll save it till we go around. Okay, thank you. Here, okay. But I just want to comment that I'm very happy that you are using the state universities. Over the, I don't know if it's been about a decade, but the OST has established very good relations with our state universities. And I'm very happy that did not exist when I was a new senator. So I'm happy to see that uh, research funding is going into the state use. Uh, and so later on, the, my line of questioning is more like an final outcome that we expect. Diba? I just don't like those research papers filed away. It should contribute to the, the solutions that we're looking for, but I'll hold that for later. So um, thank you everyone for sticking to your time, um, suggested time uh, constraints so we can finish everything. DSWD uh, is next and ASEC Irene Dumlao um, has the floor and then please be ready MWSS and then MWRB. Good afternoon, Madam Chairperson, Se Honorable Senator Pia Caetana, Honorable Senator Rafi Tulfo, all invited guests, good afternoon. Foremost, we wish to express our profound gratitude for inviting the DSWD to discuss its plans to help those who will be affected by the El Nino phenomenon and to provide wider access to safe and potable water. Concerning the request of the committee to discuss plans and assistance to those who will be affected, uh, we wish to state that last month, Secretary Rex Cachalian met with the Disaster Management Group of the Department and all our regional directors to ensure that funds and other relief items are prepositioned strategically in the DSWD warehouses and are readily available for immediate augmentation to local government units. This in our effort to assist at least population relations who will be affected by the dry spell, especially the farmers and farm laborers. Um, the El Nino phenomenon is one of the concerns discussed also in the social protection strategic planning held last week, wherein the Social Development uh, count, uh, Committee, Subcommittee on Social Protection, committed to working together and uh, look into policy interventions that can mitigate the effects of El Nino as the, if, uh, as the phenomenon will actually affect livelihoods. So we're looking at introducing drought-tolerant crop varieties, expanding irrigation, expanding social protection coverage, providing social transfers to protect vulnerable populations from welfare losses during such a phenomenon. Now, on the full implementation of social protection floor towards universal access, we would like to mention that the DSWD has actively implemented programs promoting access to potable water, proper sanitation, and good hygiene practices. Our efforts have, have actually raised social awareness, capacity building, and self-reliance for many Filipinos, especially those in impoverished and marginalized areas. Evident, evident to that is the inclusion of a module 
on the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program Family Development Session on water sanitation and hygiene to promote the importance of access to potable water. It also aims to trigger four peace beneficiaries to demand their household community potable water system and to inculcate the value and practice of sanitation and proper hygiene. The DSWD is actually working with the DOH on this matter. Congruent to this also is implementing the Kapit Bisig Laban sa Kahirapan Comprehensive and Integrated Delivery of Social Services that uses participatory situational analysis tools to assess the condition of the community through a community-driven development approach. And among the sub-projects prioritized is essential social services, particularly community water systems. We would like to mention, Madam Chair, that as of April of this year, more than 4,000 completed water system sub-projects under Kalahi Seeds have benefited more than 546,000 households in 3,626 communities nationwide. Now, on the concern of uh, sustainability, we would like actually to mention if you will permit us, that DSWD cannot overemphasize the need to involve the community in the project planning, designing, implementation, and management. And uh, the promotion of community ownership and accountability leading to sustainable and well-maintained community water system, of course, is vital. And this is com consistent with the community-driven development approach espoused by the Kalahi Seeds. That's it for the DSWD, Madam Chair. Thank you. You said more than I expected, which is good. <laughs> Kasi normally, sanay ako makarinig lang nung mga uh, interventions pag nandiyan na yung calamity. And what I really want to hear is some of the things that you mentioned in the short time you had, which is the long-term interventions that you're doing, you mentioned with DOH. So we'll, we'll try to dive into that a little bit more later, depending on our available time. Thank you. So um, next would be MWSS engineer Ol um, there you go. Ah, sorry. Hindi ko nabasa yung sulat ng staff ko. Engineer Cleopas. Leonor Cleopas. Yeah, no. I, letter O yung basa ko. Cleopas. Kaya I look there na lang. Um, you have the floor, ma'am. Yeah. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. And uh, thank you for inviting MWSS for this very important bills that are large. We have submitted our position. And uh, very brief, briefly, we want to inform the Honorable uh, Chairman of the MWS Initiative to mitigate the impact of the El Nino and also our water security legacy plan. Uh, under the directive of the President, uh, we have to adopt a whole of government and whole of nation uh, approach and institute protocol based on scientific long-term processes and the establishment of the El Nino team. Uh, Madam Chair and Senator Rappi, uh, for the information, we are serving uh, 20 million uh, population. We have three concessioners. One is Manila, that one is the shaded green, and the Manila water, our east zone concessioner, shaded blue, and the red is the, the whole province of Bulacan. We are serving 22 water districts, giving them treated bulk water for the whole province of Bulacan. For the information, our next slide, our uh, Metro Manila raw water sources is coming from the Umirai and Gat Ipola Mesa system. We are getting 90% of our water supply for the whole uh, areas that I have mentioned, but also we have uh, abstract water to Lago from Laguna Lake. Uh, we have the Putatan treatment plant one and two and the Cardona water treatment plant. On ongoing construction is also coming from uh, Laguna Lake, is the East Bay and Poblacion. We also developed the Wawa Tayabasan system. Right now, we have the 80 million liters per day from Tayabasan Weir and the ongoing new Wawa Dam project. Uh, for the long term, we are doing our Kaliwa Dam project. Every hour, we monitor the uh, elevation of Angat, Ipo and La Mesa. Next slide. And for the immediate action by NWSS in, and its concessioners to have a business continuity uh, in, term, in times of summer and also the upcoming El Nino, for Maynilad, we have constructed packaged water treatment plant, especially in, in the area of Cavite 
and we have developed our new water. This means that we recycle water from our new water or uh, wastewater treatment plant and making sure that that complies with the Philippine National Drinking Water Standard. We also get the approval from NWRB to develop our existing deep wells so that if there are some shortage of water, we can tap the deep wells. We also ex ex uh, instructed the two concessioners uh, to have extra effort in the recovery of NRW. With the revised concession agreement, the non-revenue water is now a target and being penalized under the revised concession agreement. For the affected areas, especially in the area of Manila, there is a deployment of water tankers and installation of static tanks so that uh, people will be able to really determine where to get the water. And also, for the Putatan 1 and 2, we know that there is a big problem on that. MWSS is taking um, a drastic action by uh, inviting the Public Utility Board of Singapore to have a third-party assessment of the Putatan water treatment plants being operated by Mainilad. On the part of Manila Water, they continue to have 24 by 7 uh, supply of water. And uh, they also constructed the Maritina Package Water Treatment Plant and also the East Bay, which is um, located in Pakil, also drawing water from uh, Laguna Lake. Uh, we have 25 million liters per day. And also the Kalawis, uh, this is the Wawa Dam and the uh, repurposement of our existing MWSS existing deep wells. For the immediate action by MWSS, also in terms of uh, the uh, El Nino, incoming El Nino, uh, the possible conduct of cloud seeding operation with um, partnership with PAGASA and the Department of Agriculture. We have also have several uh, advocacy video and also our assistance to the National Irrigation Administration, considering that Angat Dam is a multi-purpose dam and it also supplies water to um, uh, irrigation. Next slide, next slide. Okay. These are our advocacy video uh, and uh, brochure in, in times of uh, summer. Uh, Honorable Chairman, we also have the water security uh, pillars of MWSF. So we have laid down our water security roadmap. Uh, number one is re-engineering of raw water conveyance. These are water conveyance that was laid in 1930s, and we are now in the process of renewing and replacing the old tunnels and aqueducts from uh, Angat down to La Mesa. We also have the short to medium term as uh, approved by MWSS Board of Trustees to allow our two concessioners to develop uh, the small to medium water sources. But uh, for the long term, MWSS is taking, uh, constructing the Kaliwa Dam. Right now, Kaliwa Dam is 22%. After the seven and a half years or almost eight years of uh, talking with the indigenous people and other permits that has to be uh, acquired. With the, next slide. You can see in the table that uh, uh, these are the, our water source roadmap that will deliver additional, uh, additional volume of water every year and that will take us up to 20, even beyond 2050, uh, Madam Chair. So this is the program of MWSS in terms of water security um, uh, roadmap. Thank you. I have a lot of questions there too, but um, I'm looking at your presentation. Thank you for all the details you provided here. Let's just go to our last resource person, then we can open the floor for questions and discussions. Um, from NWRB, uh, Dr. David, you have the floor. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning po. And uh, of course, kay Senator uh, Idol po, uh, Rafi Tulvo. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so, uh, the National Water Resources Board, on behalf of Water Resources Board, no, we support po, no, the proposed uh, bills uh, as proposed by uh, uh, 
the Senator Juan uh, one, one Miguel Mixubiri and uh, one, uh, Senator Joel Binanueva regarding the proposed bill in providing wider access no, to safe and uh, potable water up to every barangay of our country. And uh, as well as no, the, uh, the uh, proposed bill by uh, the Honorable Chair on an act providing framework on water sustainability which uh, we believe no, uh, will provide a long-term uh, security of, uh, for water resources for our people. Yung mga, yung, our specific uh, comments for this uh, proposed bill, so, Madam Chair, were already forwarded to DNR, considering that uh, the NWRP is an attached agency of the DNR. Uh, as an additional information, Madam Chair, the, the National Water Resources Board has prepared a what we call a water security roadmap wherein uh, in that roadmap, uh, we outlined uh, several action plans uh, and there are several teams so, on providing water security for economy uh, under a water, uh, water energy, and uh, food uh, nexus. Likewise, uh, securing uh, the environmental uh, requ uh, requirements of our uh, water resources, both for groundwater and surface water. And uh, likewise, no, the... Uh, Sustaining water supply for our domestic demand, no? uh, both for the rural and water uh, requ requirements, including uh, sanitation, and uh, as well as the resiliency no? of our water uh, in uh, the building or development of appropriate or resilient water infrastructure, and protecting, restoring, enhancing the natural storage of our water. And uh, of course, uh, similar no? in support of the uh, of the uh, uh, NEDAS Philippine Water Supply uh, Sanitation Master Plan, this uh, the action plan also supports uh, the uh, some reforms uh, in uh, the water administration, including the creation of apex body and some regulatory reforms also, Madam Chair. No? And uh, with that, no, we would like to uh, summarize that uh, in order to ensure water security for sustainable development, uh, the need to manage the water supply uh, in, explore, in the exploration and promotion of uh, alternative water sources, such as rainwater harvesting and uh, the reclaim of uh, wastewater. Uh, proper no, uh, water demand management uh, in collaboration with the national government agencies, as well as the academe in the adoption and development of water efficient technologies for industry and services. And uh, of course, uh, I think the the recently issued no, the Water Resource Management uh, Office uh, will uh, address no, the issue on the governance of our uh, water resources under an integrated water resource management framework. And under the PDP, no, uh, 2023 to 2028, the, uh, the big issue or requirement of uh, water infrastructure and development of uh, infrastructure for the integration of flood use with proper flood control and optimization of our country's water resources. And uh, more specifically, uh, Madam Chair, no, as uh, our colleague from NWSS has uh, outlined earlier, the NWRB is also collab uh, closely working with uh, NWSS, NIA, and uh, NAPOCOR in uh, providing no, uh, access or addressing the requirement of Metro Manila, particularly in their water requirements, which uh, which being supplied no, by the Angat Dam Reserva, Madam Chair. I think uh, that's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Before I um, thank you, Dr. David, before I give the floor to Senator Tulfo for further questions, um, just want to clarify that itong creation ng WRMO, uh, how does it envision uh, NWRB? Kasi parang na musical chairs lang ang words natin doon. <laughs> Water Resource Management Office. And then this one, which was created by a PD, so matagal na tong NWRB, is National Water Resource Board. Not very different in terms of nomenclature. So the difference. what can they not do? Or what, what I, I, I noted your priorities. I wrote it down. Yes. Uh, so how will, how will their work now 
Mm. How will they continue? Thank you, Senator. The the role of NWRB stays as uh, what it is right now. They are a critical part of the WRMO. There are no functions. Actually, for, for all agencies that are now attached to the DNR, there are no functions that were lost because of the WRMO. What we are doing is coordinating their functions so that, um, in, in a way, we march uh, at, at the same beat. WRMO is more like the conductor. Ganun na lang. Um, yes. In a way. Yes. In a way. Correct. Okay. Because I just don't I just don't like having to if if I, I don't want to see agencies that are not going to function. No. If something has to be um set aside, which which probably will happen when the department is created, if it's a priority, then it probably will be created. Um but in the meantime, it's a conductor. Okay. So Senator Tulfo, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Dalawa lang pong question ko. Uh, first, I would like to direct my question to Dr. Rosaline Vianzon. Uh, Dr. Vianzon, uh, recently ako po'y nagpa-test ng water supply sa Bohol, particular na po sa Balilihan, Bohol, kasi I received complaints from residents there na yung water supply nila ay marumi and uh, they showed me some videos eh kulay tsokolate nga po yung mga tubig. So after testing, uh, lumabas nga po yung result. Uh, ang sabi po mismo ng provincial uh, health official nila doon na contaminated ng E. coli. Hindi lang po malaman kung yung po ba ay galing sa feces ng tao, hayop, groundwater po yun. Now, ang tanong ko po, tama ho ba yung sinabi niya na kailangan ng tatlong testing para muna bago magpalabas ng uh, um, announcement sila uh, para sa kanilang next course of action. So, in ho ba tamang procedure? Another testing pa and another testing meaning two more testing? The fact po na nag-positive na siya sa unang test is already a signal na hindi siya pwedeng inumin. Uh, dapat nga po yun ay ititreat. Ititreat po yung tubig, uh, meaning to say, i-disinfect po kasi nakitaan na siya na positive with E. coli. And E. coli, sir, usually comes from human excreta. So malamang po yun, may mga dumudumi mga households at yung dumi po nila pumapasok doon sa water system na yun. Kaya siya nakocontaminate. But nonetheless po, pagka siya ay positive, ang una pong gagawin doon ay parang ipaanunsyo po na talagang kailangan uh, mag-observe sila ng proper way of... Uh, uh, disinfecting itong kanilang tubig. Uh, simple, bo simple boiling po sa isang household will be very useful. And yung pong tinatawag namin chlorination process po will be uh, useful in terms of really uh, killing the bacteria that has caused the contamination. And then after po nun, titest po uli para malaman po uli kung pwede na po siya uh, inumin po na as usual po. And then it has to be regularly tested. Yun po yung nasa aming protocol na it has to be regularly tested po para nakikita ko maaring siya ngayon ay positive, tinrit natin, nag-negative, pero after next week, baka mag-ulit po yun. So, nandun po yung regularity of testing, which is very important po. And lastly po, uh, in all the water providers po, we're really recommending them to have this so-called water safety plan or WSP na kung saan po, yun yung magiging guide ng ating mga water service providers para malaman nila yung kung ang kinilang sineserve na tubig ay of good qualities and of, of good quality and of safety. Pag may mga breaks po or uh, parang hindi nila nasusunod, sa kanilang plano that calls for po, uh, replanning and then looking into the interventions bakit hindi po nangyayari, nangyayari nagagawa yung dapat pong nasa, nakasaad doon sa kanilang water safety plan. So mahalaga po na may mga water safety plans po ang ating mga water service providers kahit po ito ay LGU manage or barangay manage, community manage, whatever is the management po ng water service provider that plan is very crucial po to, le to lead and to guide the uh, providers in terms of how to keep their water provision to the community safe and of good quality. Thank you for your honor. Uh, isa na lamang po, uh, Madam Chair, para kay Dr. Uh, Vianzon. Uh, pwede ho bang pakialaman niyo po at paimbestigan niyo po itong nangyari ngayon sa Balilahan, Bohol? Kasi I was trying to contact you guys uh, tungkol sa issue na ito. But I, we did have had a hard time. We did have a hard time na 
uh, getting in touch with anybody from the DOH. Kasi nga po, marami na nagkakasakit doon sa lugar na yon based on the complaints that we receive. And yet, mabagal po yung kilos ng mga otoridad doon. Pwede ba panghimasukan nyo ito? Uh, itong nangyayari ngayon sa Balilahan, Buhol, na deklarado talagang contaminated na po ng uh, E. coli. And another thing also, uh, tama lang ho bang proseso yon na sasabihin po ng mga health officials sa isang probinsya na they would not divulge information uh, such as yung nasabi ko na contaminated ng E. coli, tinatago po nila unless meron daw po good signal from higher authorities. Was that properly handled when, when uh, they... Uh, they uh, dealt with us? Sir, yung pong sa ni-request nyo, we'll take note of that and we'll coordinate po sa aming mga regional coordinators dyan sa Region 7 because Bohol is Region 7 po. So, Balila, bal, ano, Balilahan? Balilihan, Balilihan po. Balilihan Bohol. Bohol. Okay, okay. Sige po. Then number two po, uh, it's also necessary that in every municipality, meron silang tinatawag na Local Drinking Water Quality Committee. This committee is really a group of uh, locals po, headed usually and by the by, by the mayor himself or by the local chief executive na talagang pinag-uusapan po nila mga issues regarding water, uh, not just the finding of being positive, but even po yung access. Uh, pinag-uusapan din po dyan sa committee na yan. At lalo po nitong recently, may mga outbreaks na nangyari. That will be the proper venue po na kung saan idinidiscuss locally yung ganitong mga issues para lahat po ng uh, sangay ng gobyerno will be involved in undertaking and providing the correct intervention. Uh, Doktora, the problem is yung mga taga-LGU mismo ang nireklamo dahil sila daw po ay naging pabaya at sila po ang nagpapatakbo ng maruming water system doon. So that's why I was asking you, requesting from you to investigate immediately kasi nga po at stake dito yung kalusugan ng mga residente roon. Sinabi na po mismo ng doktor nila doon sa, prob sa probinsya na contaminated ng E. coli and yet doon po ako nalarma nung sinabihan ako na kailangan another two more testing. So sabi ko, paano kung nagkasakit na ng kamatay ng mga tao, ba't kailangan pa na another testing? Eh, munti ko lang sabihin dun sa doktor, ano kay inumin mo muna doktor yung may kulay? Tingnan natin kung matibay bang tiyan mo. So anyway, doc, pakiimbestigahan lang. Yes po, Your Honor. Tatawagan po namin kaagad yung ating regions po. Th thank, thank you. And, and... Would you, with your permission, Go ahead po. To, uh, on, Madam this, Madam on this exact topic, um, I, I'm being um, informed by my lawyer that NWRB gave a notice to the same municipality that you're referring to huh. to explain uh, their extraction process or yeah their extraction process. Can somebody educate us on that? So meron na palang. So I think what you were asking for is who is that agency? Kasi nga, ang, ang gulo eh. Who is that agency who will now oversee the municipality? That's yes. what His Honor was telling, informing Dr. Vianso na, teka muna, eh, kung mismo yung municipality ang nire-reklamo, mm -hmm. mahirap na masolve nila yon. And so it turns out that NWRB has asked them to explain. So can you elaborate? Do you know anything about this, Dr. David? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. No, uh, regarding the uh, issue, no, uh, about this, uh, when we sent uh, to the local government unit of uh, Balilihan, no, I think it's regarding the issue on the uh, extraction point, no, of, of where where Balilihan, uh, the local government of Balilihan is uh, extracting or getting their water. So it's more of that is related to the sanitary issue. Not not necessarily. Di pa po, Madam Chair. Di pa po. It's more on the on the right to use of water. So mayro po issue. So nakaroon po ng complaint ngayon sa NWRB. So we are educating po ngayon. Okay. Madam Chair. So then I'll be. Thank you for that quick response. Para mabilis tayo. So who will now answer this question? Uh, on on uh, the complaint that the source and it's not the same source the source of this water being complained is not the same source it's a different problem saan daw ang right nila to extract but is that the source of the problem madam chair excuse me yes. uh, is isang source na po groundwater groundwater so the site yeah the municipality karamihan po dun sa balilahan uh groundwater po ang okay. source at wala silang ginagamit filtration okay 
So iba pa pa lang issue yun. Also, so when when the municipality cannot um well when the municipality is being held accountable, then who? Kasi I'm asking you because I can I can forward my own assumption, but since Dr. David, you're the one telling us about the orchestration now of uh, WRMO. I will listen to you first. Actually, sir, may konting relationship to. Dahil yung sinasabi ni Dr. David, David din po pala siya, no? <laughs> um, ay naghahanap ng panibagong source ang buong munisipyo ng Balilihan na para hindi na mag-rely dun sa mga uh, shallow wells so ng mga barangay. There's been acknowledgement that there's a problem with the source that's and that's why they're finding that's another true. source which mukhang hindi nila pinaalam kaya ngayon <laughs> nagre-reklamo. Meron lang konting issue but, true. but true. I think that's a more sustainable yeah. source than the shallow wells that the barangays are using. But is there a grievance mechanism? That's the question eh. Is there a grievance mechanism when the municipality source is doubtful. So wala tayong question na naghanap sila ng ibang source, that's another problem. Mm -hmm. So the question now is where do the people go to because I would imagine that this is one of more than maybe may, oh, sana hindi many pero baka dumami pa yung ganyang klasing tanong, what is that mechanism? Do they go to court or is there an administrative process that that can be availed of first? The water supply system of Balilihan is LGU run. There are different uh, systems. Some are water districts, some are private. No, so the 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 first uh, line of defense, kumbaga, would be the LGU. Now, if they are not able to solve the problem, then they go to DOH. No, actually, kahit uh, at this uh, early, yung water quality kasi for drinking water is uh, under the purview of uh, DOH, uh, and so it's between the LGU and the DOH to resolve the matter. You say, uh, Madam Chair, from what I've heard and understand, nagkaroon uh, na ng demandahan or filing of cases against some people sa LGU, sa Office of the Ombudsman, at uh, hanggang ngayon, di pa ko na-resolve yun. So, hang, habang sila po'y nag-aaway doon, kung ano pa man yung agenda nila, anong reason, ba't silang didimandahan, nag-reklamuhan, nag, uh, nag I think the DOH should get into the picture and the DNR. Ang importante rito yung clean, potable water ang kailangan ng mga tao doon. Uh, hayaan na po natin yung away-away nila. Okay, doon po yung sa kaligtasan ng mga uh, water consumers ang much uh, concerned ako. If, if I may, Madam Chair, some uh, light at the end of the tunnel because Balilihan nga has uh, water quality issues. For this year, as uh, what I was mentioning, 14.6 billion in water supply. There's, a, if I'm not mistaken, 30 million allocated for Balilihan alone for okay. water supply. So we will make sure that uh, the, the issues in terms of water quality will be resolved through this, these projects. That's for this year. So for the meantime, uh, Dr. Vianzon, uh, pwede ho ba kayo mag-issue na ng advisory para sa mga residente ng Balilihan because ayaw po mag-issue ng provincial health officer doon na uh, ito ay may E. coli, uh, contaminated ng E. coli itong water nyo per testing done mismo ng mga taga-LGU. Uh, wag muna kayo uminom niyan, uh, painitin nyo, pakuluan muna, wag nyo gamitin yung diretsyong inumin, etc. Kasi ayaw po mag-issue ng ano po, nung provincial health uh, officer Kasi sabi niya, kailangan dalawa pang testing. Pago daw sila mag-issue ng advisory. So, baka pwede niyo nang pakimasukan to kasi kayo nasa national government. We'll look into the issue, sir. Uh, but definitely po, yung in terms of the treatment, actually, DOH po ang nagpo-provide ng treatment ng mga gantong klase, mga tubig po eh. And then, of course, we also issue advisories in mm. coordination with our regional counterparts. And even po yung pagtetest po, yung mga kits na ginagamit, testing kits, binibigay po yun ng DOH to really ensure that there's regularity of testing para makita po na talagang tinetest nila at talagang always provided po sila ng safe water. So, these are regional these are po yung binibigay ng DOH. But nonetheless, sir, we'll be looking into the issuance of an advisory. Thank you for the reminder, sir. I think I think we can clarify this further, Senator Tulfo. No? Go ahead, um, 
when you when you responded no to the question by saying na DOH din naman ang nagbibigay ng testing and treatment ang ibig sabihin ba ganito pag nagtest ang ang water supply na may E. coli may madaling treatment yon such that if the treatment is done you test again and there is a possibility that it is potable again very soon within a short period of time is that accurate Actually, ma'am, the, the, the treatment mentioned here is uh, the chlorination. Correct. The, uh, so, simply on, chlorination. Yes, yes it's and, chlor and so within a matter of a few days after the chlorination, it is possible that that water is potable. Is that correct? It the test po siya ulit correct. to determine. But my question is, is it... Po okay, so let me rephrase. Um, it is tested, may E. coli. It is treated by way of chlorination, as you mentioned. And then it will be tested again. So my question is, pagka-test ulit nun, it is possible that it would be negative for E. coli and, posit and, and it can be drinkable already. Possible na mangyari yun. Yes, ma'am. With a simple uh, intervention of chlorinating the water. Yes, ma'am. For so, a temporary period. For a temporary period. So nag may logic naman pala, nasasagot naman ang... Uh, ang uh, munisipyo na sandali lang itetest namin ulit. Tama. Pero I think ang concern ng residents, oh in the meantime, anong iinumin namin? ba diba? So I think these are communication issues that can be, like for me, hindi ko alam yun. Ha? I'm not a scientist, that's why I love to be educated. Hindi ko alam na by a simple chlorination, pwede palang ma-address ang, uh, ang E. coli problem. Uh, pwede pala. And how many days does it normally take? Is that consecutive days of of treatment? Ma'am, yung disinfectant tablets po, babad lang po yun. Once oh. ma-dissolve po siya, and then uh, it will so now be... Hours? Yes. Even hours? Oh, so, ah. I, I, like I said, kahit ako, hindi ko alam yun. Mm -hmm. So, lalo naman yung mga tao, di ba? Exactly. How would I know as a lawyer, I'm not a scientist, and you can even be a scientist but have another expertise na isang, isang lagayan lang pala ng tablets yun, eh, potable na yun, di ba? Siguro ang gusto nila mangyari, which I've seen in Singapore, by the way, ay yung new water, iniinom mismo ng, uh, ng proponents ng recycling water yung tubig. Lalagay nila sa bottle yung tubig na gal galing sa sewage na dumaan na sa proseso, inumin nyo. E sa sobra kong believe dun sa process, ako ininom ko because I'm a believer of science, no? Because I believed in the science that was shown to me. That's me. Others will not drink it. So siguro, ang gusto nila mangyari, makita nilang inumin din ng mga opisyalis nila yung tubig na yun. <laughs> siguro yun. Correct, Madam Chair. Uh, nabanggit niyo po, Doktor uh, Bianzon, yung chlorination. So, hindi po ito ginawa ng mga taga-LGU doon. Uh, I haven't heard of such thing na bibigyan silang tablet para ilagay sa tubig. And this has been happening, Madam Chair, for so many, many years. At kaya nga sabi ko, nagkadimandahan na. So, hindi po nila ini-introduce ito. Uh, dapat, they should have done this long time ago, but they didn't. Uh, now, saan po magagaling yung chlorination process, yung tablet na inilalagay sa tubig? Sino magdi-distribute noon? Is that DOH or the LGU? We provide po yung tablets, pero at the household level na po, para ready to drink na po sa mga households. Household level. Yes, ma'am. Okay, pero do they know this, no? Kasi it seems to be a communication... Wala, wala, wala po akong nanig. Eh, and, and, and how I mean, maiba lang ako dun sa situation na, na pinresent sa atin ni Senator Tulfo. How prevalent is that such that can we have commercial ads on that? Sa show, baka sa show niya po, pwede <laughs> magkaroon ng commercial na pwede nakakita po. na. Tapos ako, guess mo ko, iinumin ko yung tubig na yun. Basta Sige. Basta promise nyo na ganun talaga yun. Do it because people have to understand. So, I will do it. If you tell me that 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 is the process and it will be clean, I will do it. Diba? Pero, People have to understand kasi otherwise, bakit, paano sila maniniwala na malinis na yan kung hindi na ipapaliwanag ng maayos? Yes, actually ma'am, it's an issue din po yung communication, you're right po. Kaya advisories would be really be very useful. And during world uh, events po na World Toilet Day and World Water Day, these are our, our, our advocacies that we're telling them. Yung iba po kasi, parang ayaw nila yung lasa ng residual chlorine, but... Uh, Definitely, that will also be dissolved later on. Kaya kailangan inumin po nila yon, rather than taking a positive uh, a water that is considered to be positive for E. coli. And for those who would like, don't like the taste naman po of chlorine, of course, the basic principle of boiling is also uh, being advocated at the household level po, just to uh, just to decontaminate po that uh, positive water, drinking water. Look. 
Dr. Bianzon, sige, chlorinate at uh, boil. E eh, paano kung kulay tsokolate yung tubig? Ganun pa rin yun. Lalagyan pa rin ng tablet. Inumin mo kahit na kulay tsokolate. So what are you going to do in that case? What, what will be your advice to those people? And can, I, can I follow up that question? Go ahead po. Pag ganun yung kulay, pero no. na-test mo na and okay, wala na siyang e -coli. Anong ibig sabihin nun? It's just a color issue na lang? I... Out of curiosity, kasi if I was there, tapos sabihin sa akin ng scientist, o oh, ano na yan, test na siya ng negative E. coli, okay na yan. Siyempre sabihin, eh, ba't ganun yung kulay? Kulay brown. So, yeah. Actually, ma'am, it's not just when we speak of the testing of water, we're following a set of standards, the Philippine National Standards for Drinking Water. Now it looks into first physical characteristics or physical Yung clarity, yeah. yung... Uh, odor, ano taste, odor, po, color, yes, color, yes. Yes, appearance. Yes, yes ma'am. And then, meron yes, po yung... Hindi pa pa sa yung kulay tsokolate. Yes. Kala ko po, o, kasi sabi ni Sir, positive lang for E. coli. Because so, minsan... May iba pa. Clear, may iba pa po. Pops pa lang sa E. coli. Ah, okay. No, uh, that's my question to you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, kulay niya ganun, you need to yeah. test that for something else pa rin. Yes po. Actually, the there are water na clear looking as if parang kalam malinis pero when you test for microbiological tests which is that of the E. coli dun lumalabas po yung positive so no pa rin po yung for drinking so, baka naman you can come up with an FAQ na pasado sa amin ni Senator Tulfo na kami naiintindihan namin madali rin maipaliwanag sa tao so wala ng confusion di ba kasi if we left it at that kung hindi siya nag-follow up question ng kulay eh di ibabalandra ko na mamaya yan na Ayun naman pala, pag na-test ng e-coli, tapos na yun pala, may iba pa palang test. So, hindi tayo, hindi ganun ka lawak din ang, ang understanding ko because we are just engaging in a isang tanong, isang sagot, di ba? So, baka you can give this to us in an easy to read, a 10-point ano na, anong gagawin mo? Ano ba dapat ang testing standard na dapat sinusundan ng lahat ng munisipyo? And kung ikaw ay isang nanay, Ano yung, ano mo, uh, ano ba tawag doon? Yung, uh, ano ba to? What's the, um, ano yung, ano yung mga, what, what can raise your suspicion? Diba? Ano ba yung titignan mo? Yun nga, yung kulay, yung amoy ba, yung itsura, at ano pa ba? Diba? Lasa. Lasa, of lasa. course, lasa. And on the note ng lasa, there is a documentary, um, on Netflix. Very interesting. Uh, documentary on different uh, subject matters. But the first, si ano? Anong artistang to? Who? Yes. Zac Efron. Galing mo. <laughs> si Zac Efron. Na, di ba yung first topic niya was water? Um, nagpunta siya sa mga water expert and they taste water. So on that note, it is possible for water to taste different, but they're all okay. And that again, that should be explained to people. Like you said, may ibang ayaw nila. Ako may bottled water ako na hindi ko gusto yung lasa. Hindi ko siya babanggitin dahil hindi ibig sabihin na hindi siya malinis. Ibig sabihin lang, hindi ko type yung lasa ng tubig na yun. But it should be explained, di ba? Kasi ano yung acceptable na range ng different taste ng water at hindi na acceptable dahil the Delikado na yan na, na ganyan ng lasa. Maasi, mapait, mga whatever. Yun. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for those reminders. Makadagdag na po, you. Madam Chair. Uh, doon sa Balilihan, ang nirequest kasi ng ilang mga residente doon and even uh, some proponents na gustong magkaroon ng shift sa ownership, yung supplier ng water is from uh, deep well or groundwater to spring water. Uh, Ano po yung takeaway nyo dyan? Na, uh, is that the same thing, yung spring water and ground water? Pareho lang ba yan? Or mas safer? Which one is safer? Uh, sir, yung terms of safety po, kasi magbe-base po yan nga po doon sa the national standards of uh, drinking water. So, tinitest po yan. But we have these so-called doubtful sources na kung saan pagka mga open bodies of water po, they're usually considered as doubtful sources po. Mm. Okay. And, oh, Madam Chair, yung isang concern ko na lang, uh, I address ko naman sa WRMO, and uh, I've heard kanina na sabi na mayroong 14.6 billion pesos na budget to all barangays sa 1,374 projects to San Visayas Mindanao, and mostly these are uh, ground water and deep well water. Tama ba? ba bakit ho deep well water and ground water? Kasi ito mga ground water, they can easily be contaminated by feces from animals, from human feces. 
mas madali pong ma-contaminate ma yun versus other source of water na pwede pong pagkukunan. Uh, you're correct, uh, Senator. Uh, I will have to qualify lang that uh, groundwater can be accessed at various levels. Now, in most cases, in, and probably it, it's uh, what 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 we have in Balilihan are shallow wells. Now, when you have uh, deep wells, you no know, greater than uh, sixty feet, sometimes one hundred meters in depth, they're actually of the best quality waters because they have been filtered. Uh, through the ground when rainwater percolated no, to the aquifer. Um, in most cases, however, our communities do not have the necessary instruments and uh, equipment to to drill no, very, very deep wells no, to access clean and safe water. Uh, and therefore, they resor resort to shallow wells. Yun yung problema. Yung naguhukay lang sila. Okay, ang nangyayari po kasi sa Balilian, every time na umuulan, konting ulan lang daw, yung tubig nila, yung nagkukulay tsokolate. So what does it mean? Uh, it most, it, most likely, it is a shallow well. So pagka umulan, yung nagpercolate na tubig ulan, may kasama siyang soil and other materials, kaya humahalo. So what is your recommendation now, uh, Dr. David and uh, Dr. Vianzon? In that case, na hindi lang po ito sa balilihan, kundi sa iba pang lugar na, 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 na nakapagsumbong sa akin, mga residente, mm -hmm. na kunting ulan lang yung kanilang tubig sa gripo ay nakukulay tsokolate, kulay itim. Mm -hmm. And it happens all the time. Alam niyo naman dito sa atin sa Pilipinas, panayang ulan. So tuwing may ulan, yung mga tao hindi nakainom ng tubig kung nagkakasakit. So what is your recommendation? Aside from boiling the water before you drink or before you use it for cooking, etc., Sir, siguro yung technology, uh, uh, perhaps I'll refer later to my engineer. Uh, there's such a thing as filtration, no techniques, na kung saan po, pagka gano'n ang itsura, uh, nire-recommend talaga na magkaroon ng filtration technologies before pumasok yung tubig sana sa household. And then pagdating po sa household, meron din pong intervention gagawin mismo yung um, household itself. So in the filtration techniques, I think that's uh, embedded dun the way it is constructed, no? the way it has been built, yung mga water system na yun. So sabi nga po ni Dr. David, uh, may mga seepage na nangyayari, kaya nga po siguro nagkakaroon ng gross contamination coming from the nearby soil, especially during rainy season, yung seepage po yun. So dapat meron built-in na uh, filtration technology po, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Anytime, I'll, I'll I'll proceed with questions. No, but if you have any of your own follow up, um, please please just let me know. Uh, I direct my question to Neda. Um, in a previous um statement, you had mentioned uh the number, the percentage of forty five percent of the population relying on point sources, uh, for for their water, which is rivers, streams, wells peddlers and other sources, and that these are susceptible to contamination. C can you verify that? Um, you are quoted saying that. Eh. Po, uh, a while ago, um, 90, uh, around 90% po access yung access sa uh, safe water. S say that again, sorry? Uh, around 90% po yung may access sa uh, safe water ngayon. 90? Of families, 90% of families. So, saan kaya galing tong 45% hindi ka familiar? Ma'am, yan po siguro yung breakdown nung, uh, I think, 90%. Um, Pero that's if that, to if be that... different kasi nakalagay dito, 45% of the population rely on these point sources which are susceptible to contamination. Uh, so yung, yung the rest of the population, that's 54% who have access to safe water. So 54, so layo pa rin sa 90 mo. Ano kayang, how yes, do we, we, how do we that, marry um, those terms? Uh, the APIS of ano po, uh, the PSA, yung 90 plus percent. So can any of your staff confirm this? Because this is in a news report quoting you. I, I give you I give you a few. Sige Please po. confer. Kasi it's, it's either bawiin nyo to kasi kayo cited dito. Eh. <laughs> and we stick with what you're saying na 90 or we dig further and find out where that came from. Go ahead and check Sige with your staff. I'll excuse you for, for a bit. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll, I'll, anyway, does anyone have any figures to that effect? 
ilan ba talaga? Kasi sabi natin, or is it, alam ko na, baka because sabi nyo, 11 million do not have access. O di ba ang population natin, 110. So therefore, 90 have access. Okay, oh, alam ko na. Ako na, naghanap, ako na nag-solve ng problem mo. But I will go back to that 45. Where does that come from? Because all this 45, okay, <clears throat> what the, what this, what, how do you dissect, first of all, this 11 million lack access to clean water? Because, these two might these figures might still be able to to stand independently of each other eh? kasi sabi 45% of the population rely on point sources so it could be that they have access but they are still relying on these other point sources that are susceptible to contamination tama o oh, but that's tama ba but nahanap mo na ba kasi naka Okay, for if we can Sige. have the for, for your information, article. this is Makati Business Club quoting NEDA in an article dated um, February 21 of this year. We'll look into it, uh, Your Honor. So, papano ba? We will not rely. Sana if you can look at, on, into it in the last 30, 20 minutes that I have here. Para lang... Kasi I'm being fair to you. I will not requote that if I'm interviewed. But if there's um there is a basis for me to assume this is true and but wala kayong hindi niyo naman kinwestiyon yan. Ilumabas eh, naman sa diaryo yan. Pag hindi totoo, pag hindi mali yung mga figures, magbigay kayo kaagad kasi kaming mga lawmakers we rely on this data. Anyway, okay. Th then let me take it further and anyone can answer, no? Um, so is this is so we're now confused with that number, okay? Uh, what what's your guess, Dr. David? What is your educated guess? I, I talked guess? to Dr. David over there. Oh, the, the, the two Dr. Yes. Davids. Uh, our our hindi, hindi rin na kami familiar dun sa 45%, but when you said point sources, the, uh, what, what we call as level one water supply would be you get water where it is found. Okay. In other words, yung, alam mo, yung hand Malapit pump. Lang sayo. No, I mean yung, yung hand pump okay. o kaya balon. Those are point sources called level one. Here in Metro Manila, our source is called level three water supply, uh -uh. meaning that the source is somewhere, ang gut dam, and then it's and piped, then it's piped it's to piped your house. Yes. So level three are, it's definitely much, much safer than level yes. one supply. Yes. So I'm I'm thinking baka level one supply yung... Hindi, kasi 45. ang nakasulat dito sa article, di ba 45% yung rely on point sources. So the balance is 54%. So it says, of the 54% 54 who have access to safe water, only 15% rely on a pipe distribution network. And 11% rely on communal fault system. So, so the balance is what? It's, say, it's still safe but less contaminated? Well, how do I digest all that? If it requires further study, can you? Para lang maayos, let's, let's discuss one set of figures, di ba? Kasi ang hirap nun, after the budget, you will be reporting sino yung may safe supply, tapos iba yung numbers natin dito. And this came from Makati Business Club. So, syempre, people tend to to have a certain level of comfort when they read the they read this, uh, and, they, and they're quoting Ned as their source. Um, so, anyway, let, let me move on. No? Um, ano yung level 2? Because you mentioned 1 and you level 2. Baka si 2 to. Communal. Ano yun? Um, there's a source, for okay. example, a spring in the mountains. It's piped to a single location. So there is a pipe. There's a, okay. there's a pipe and then it's stored in a reservoir. Ah. And people go there no, but and fetch water. But more common in rural areas. Not yeah, oh yeah. Or even, yes. even, in, Very common. even in cities outside of Metro Manila, may ganun no, pa hindi no. na. Rural na talaga. Mostly level 3 na tayo sa cities. So almost all cities in the country are level 3. Yes. And uh, level 2 and level 1 mm -hmm. would be outside of the cities. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. And when we talk about cities, we're talking about the Poblacion area. They will be under level 3 
uh, water supply system. But it's but possible outside, within uh, the city. Within the city, mean uh, level so there, two. There are, there are huge cities within the city in the outskirts. I'll see you. Yeah. Within the cities, to sa mga outskirts, Correct. balik level, level one and two level, and level two. two. Yes. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So I feel like there is a lot of work that should be done. And Dr. Vianson, I note na health promotion bureau kayo ha. Like kung ina-assure na may budget kayo. And if you need a bigger budget, can you recommend what that is? Because there's so much that goes into communication. Eh? So like um, uh, the importance of people understanding that the quality of their water is directly related to their sanitation practices. And then um, I'll, I'll tie that in now because when I asked, remember earlier, na saan gagastusin itong 14 billion and you said these are barangay and municipal projects, but these are water sources, not sanitation solutions. Oh, yon. So what is our budget or our, what is our current budget and what is our our desired budget for the sanitation? Because parang it's like a it's like a vicious cycle, right? Meron na ba tayo nun? Do you have those numbers? Mom, in 2023, we... And sorry, I'll take note that I think it's you also, Dr. David, who specifically... Uh, sorry, no, 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 no. Now I don't know. Who was it? Who was it who presented na ngayon, Sineda, ikaw, ang nagsabi na ngayon, uh, pinagsasama nyo na ang discussion ng safe water supply and sanitation. ba? Kasi dati hiwalay. O, di yun na nga. So, since magkasama na, pati yung numbers dapat magkasama. And even your presentation, Dr. David, should include na rin sana, or, or your lobbying for funding, should include also sanitation. Kasi otherwise, may disjunct din kayo dahil yung orchestrator mo, hindi naman naka-align dun sa composition mo. Yes? Yes, okay. Did you want to add something? Um, may I just confirm yung 45%? Uh, okay. I agree with ano po, uh, Yusek David na it's uh, level 1 point source po. It's taken, um, it appears to be taken from the master plan. Okay, so can somebody now explain this to me in a coherent manner? Na kasama dun si 11 million, kasama to, explain it to me coherently, para isang messaging lang tayo, it is not my goal na pag in-interview ko, guguluhin ko yung sinabi nyo, or iipitin ko kayo, hindi ko kayo gaganunin, pero ayusin natin yung figures natin. So, should I ask other questions while you put that together? Or you can tell me now. I, I want you to tell it to me in a flow that I understand and can explain to my 12, now 13 year old son. I'll, Try, ma'am, uh, but any <laughs> music, David, ba? <laughs> sorry to throw the ball at you. You're the scientist. Madam Chair. <laughs> Madam Chair. Doctor, the other doctor, the food. <laughs> Uh, magkaiba po kasi madam ano, yung madam yung ano po kasi yung level yung level 1 to 3 although sined uh, we adapted that based on the NEDA ano NEDA issuance no ito po yung uh, different levels of access or service to water no kaya nga po kung level 1 point source lang po yan no and then uh, level 2 is uh, ano siya no communal communal uh, source and then uh, sabi nga ni Yusek uh, CP David yung level 3 ito yung pipe no? So the water will go, we access directly yung household to, through the pipes, not through the faucet. So yun po yung, uh, so in that case, Madam Chair, yung 45% na sinasabi po ay uh, dinatetermine lang na yung level 1 na point sources ay uh, level of service is 45%. No? Yun po, Madam Chair. No? And then yung po kasing access naman dun sa safe water, no, uh, iba po kasi yung number na yan kasi sabi nga natin is iba-iba pong source yan, no? iba-ibang source be it, it can be uh, a groundwater, it can be spring, it can be rivers no? ang uh, nagiging issue lawag dahil unsafe, no? unsafe yung uh, tubig na yan kasi nga po primarily hindi siya natitreat no? uh, may absence po ng treatment so magkaiba pong number magkaiba pong ano yan, number siya Madam Chair Yung isa po is yung type of level of service, no? paano na-access yung tubig. And then naman po yung isa, yung uh, sinasabi nga nating 11%, yung kinakualify po, gano'ng ka-safe yung uh, in, uh, iniinom ng mga tao po. Uh, I hope I'm clear, Madam Chair. 
Well, you just added that last statement to the three levels of services. Yeah, so meaning to say the 11% that don't have access to clean water are most like it's happening somewhere here in the level, level one and two, correct? Yes, Madam Chair. Because how would I know? How would anyone else know? And then otherwise we have different numbers. And even you, it took you a while to figure that out, diba? Right? So meaning to say, um, even though, and, and this is where I'm still confused, 45% ang level 1. Not to say that everything that they take out of the point source is not clean. Diba? Kasi meron namang clean. Ako, may inom ako ng tubig pag nasa bundok ako, parang bahala na Lord. Pero mukha namang malinis, wala namang amoy. But I do drink water, fresh flowing water. And when you when you hike with the locals, they'll tell you na yan, malinis. Diba? They'll tell you naman eh. So, so the assumption is, um, no, I have no assumption, but... Um, of the 45%, parang you're saying na a bulk of this is where that 11% will come from. Parang ganun. Kasi the 11% is the, is the general number eh, na hindi sila may access sa safe drinking water. So if you'll now say, if you'll, 11 million, which sorry is about, 11 million, tama? It was, that number came from 11 million eh. That number came from 11 million, which is similar to 11%. Um, because nga, you're not assuming na lahat itong point source is unclean. May portion lang dyan na unclean. So saan pa lang kaya nang galing sa 11%, per 11 million? Saan pa rin galing yun? Paano nyo na, na ano yun? Na-extract yung 11 million? Ma'am, if I may conjecture, yung sa, ano po kasi, sa PSA, sila po yung nagsusurvey nung safety nung tubig. So sa kanila, 91.6 yung sa safe sources. And so that that balance, that that should be the 11 million na hindi nakaka-access po nung safe, quote-unquote, source. Which is a different thing nga po, gaya ng sinabi ni Sir Bill, if you look at access, iba po yung safety dun sa level of access na 1, 2, 3. You to, to fix all Madam these Chair. figures. Kasi tuturo ko lang naman sa inyo nakasulat dun eh na of the... Oh, kaya nga eh, di ba? So iwan ko na lang yan sa inyo. Okay, ganito na lang. Uh, it's 2.51. I have session at 3. And don't make me run anymore. I, I'd rather walk out and I know, arrive there uh, calmly. So we can wrap this up because we do have to have a second hearing. Uh -uh. Okay. We will have a second hearing. And um, uh, can, you, can you advise them? who we want to be here in person, but maybe others can be available online. Because I, I don't want you to have to sacrifice half of your day. So if we can work it out that online, okay naman sa akin. Kasi you are the main movers, no? But we have a lot of others to invite mga academicians, mga private groups, NGOs, um, uh, the franchise holders, and so on and so forth. Okay. Anyone want to make a statement? If not, I will suspend our hearing. Thank you very much, everyone.